Hola amigos, it's Jesse here with Los Cuban Cooking. Uh, today we're going to be doing picadillo. Uh, I got a little ahead of myself. I forgot to put the camera on before I started cutting a couple onions. Uh, so what we have is picadillo. It's going to be a ground beef dish. Uh, ground beef, olives, onions, capers, oregano, cumin, and uh, first we're going to broil off our tomatoes, onions, or garlic, and uh, fresh oregano. Then in our non-Cuban pan that I seem to have lost somewhere, uh, we're going to do our picadillo. The ground beef part. First thing we're going to do is get the peels off that. We're going to save the halves of those. We're going to just do the uh, white onion first. to get the flavor out and uh, we're going to mince the uh, red onion later and add it for an additional texture. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I'm going to put some oil on the pan. Whatever you have, we're going to use olive oil today. I love this bottle. Give a little glug of olive oil, extra virgin, virgin. For this application, it's all the same. All right, we got our. All right, now that this is nice and warm, where is our little guy? Take it off the heat for a second, and we're gonna, that's not the sound we wanted to hear right now. We wanted it to be a little bit softer. All right, we'll just start moving it around quickly though so it doesn't get any color. All we're trying to do is release some of that excess water. All right, got the pan cooled down a little bit. And we're good. So picadillo is going to be an easy dish to make, but it is a, another very classic Cuban staple. You'll see it at all the restaurants. All right. Now that we got this nice and softened a little bit, we don't want to get those caramel colors in here unfortunately. And this is our meat from the butcher. And we're just going to put that in there. We're going to brown it a bit. Get some color on the meat. Once we get some color on the meat, we're going to break it all up. But we do want to 
Get some salt in here already. About a tablespoon. Salt and pepper. All right. So picadillo can be used in a lot of things. You can make sandwiches with it because uh, it's vers very versatile. The, the two biggest ways you're going to eat it is going to be over rice with black beans, plantains, or yuca, or and empanadas, which we'll do in a couple videos. All right, we're getting some nice colors on here, which is what we want. I had my butcher make a, a little meat mixture for us this time. You can use whatever ground beef you'd like. It's a pretty forgiving dish. I like something with brisket. Some Wagyu fat and uh, ribeye roast. It gives me a nice uh, combination and flavor profile for the dish. We're going to add our seasonings, salt, pepper, oregano, uh, ground oregano and oregano leaves. chili and uh, yeah, that, that's it this is gonna be it. oh and cumin this is a very Cuban centric Cuban cumin dish not Cuban all right once we get these going we'll drop the heat down it's nice and hot in here. We don't want anything to burn. Alright. If anything's sticking, you can always just deglaze. We'll use some red wine right now. And Something rigid. I don't really like using this one's much more rigid. All right, and this way we can just get everything off the bottom, get all that fond into our dish, and not onto our pan. You could use red wine, white wine, vinegar, just anything to cut through. Yeah, this is much better than the other. And then to give it another type of flavor, we're gonna add some Worcestershire Shire sauce. Some of our favorite. Definitely not Cuban per se, but once you start using it in life, it's very hard not to keep on using it in different dishes to bring more depth of flavor. I don't think anybody in Cuba's ever heard the word umami, but this will definitely make them get to it. All right, let's check on these guys. They're looking nice and toasty. Next thing is uh, gonna be cut up the onion or the tomatoes, the onions. Slice the uh, olives and then put it all together and uh, we have ourselves a great looking picadillo so far. See you in about 10 minutes. All right, and it's been about 10 minutes. We got our tomatoes done in the oven. 
We'll get those guys out. Throw them into our mortar and pestle. All the water is evaporated out of our picadillo. You can tell once it starts making a more of a fr frying sound. And then we're gonna doctor this guy up just a little bit. Give it some nice hard This is what a typical Cuban mortar and pestle looks like. A Mexican one is gonna be the mocajete, the stone-based one. This is a stainless steel. Either one works. I prefer it more to a uh, blender. By the time you, you start cleaning everything and I, I feel like you get a better texture and a couple different flavors as well. All right. Let these guys introduce each other. Sorry if that was a little loud. That's the only thing I don't like about the stainless steel mortar and pestle sound. It's quite annoying. We've got the Cuban parrot on the, the tea towel. Let's, let's get this guy in. Get these flavors to figure themselves out. Add a little bit more wine. And we'll get this all the way off, all the way around. We don't want any of those flavors sticking to the pan. So always deglaze when you can. It's not gonna destroy the dish. And if you don't like wine, you can use the, as I said, the white vinegar, balsamic vinegar. Well, I wouldn't use balsamic vinegar. It's a pretty intense flavor and an expensive little bottle to ruin on making a a deglaze out of it all right so we have the cherry tomatoes and the olives that we're going to add to here we quartered up the cherry tomatoes and we just sliced and about a six six slices per olive is what we got out of the olives out of each olive. We used Queen Manzanilla olives, or Queen Jumbo olives. All right. We're gonna let these guys sweat off a little bit. bit hot and we'll just keep that in there off all right so we got all this it's all looking good this is just gonna be a few more probably about 30 minutes of getting to know each other and uh, yeah, we'll have a nice looking picadillo. Only thing left is gonna be adding the capers. And if you're a real big fan, you can add raisins. Raisins is very traditional, very Cuban. Basitas. 
and uh, I personally hate raisins so I'm not putting raisins in any of my foods uh, take that one to the bank all right see you in about 30 minutes all right and we're back to the final moments we have our capers and uh, fresh oregano here and to be honest I'm not a huge caper fan either but if I omitted the capers I might have my mom's chancleta hooked from wherever she's at and hit me right in the face and go right back to her if I omitted something else from hers and added more black pepper of course but so we will get this nice and going we want this to be nice and nice and small dices of uh, red onion All these scraps are going to be used in the stock that I'm making tonight. I know a lot of people say that, oh, this is going into stock. This is, this is, stock is like the cooking person or the baking person's banana bread. But, uh, I'm making stock today and, uh, I'm going to use all those little scraps, odds and ends from all the videos that we've been doing and all the videos that we continue to do. Uh, you can never have enough stock to make your daily meals, make soups, it's soup season right now. So we'll be doing garbanzo bean pretty soon. And uh, yeah, this is, this is picadillo for you guys. Let me know what else you'd like to see out of the Cuban uh, repertoire. Whether it's biste and cebollado, boliche, bacalao, arroz con gandules, even though that's Puerto Rican for the most part, tres leches. Can do it all. And we'll get to them all eventually. But uh, I'm going to start off with the classics. And, uh, yeah, get a nice little plate of this. <sighs> Looks pretty yummy. Not gonna lie. Use tiny spoon. Mm. Yep. You are not going to disappoint with this picadillo. As a sandwich, empanada filling, rice. You can do it in tacos. I'm about to make some rice, so get some black beans and. Put it all together and make una completa. All right. Thanks, everybody.